And welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, knights, revenant, demon spawn, elves, whatever you might be. It's great to be in the Empire today, my friends. We are continuing on the new player series for Raid Shadow Legends. Been having a ton of fun. And guess what? Speaking of new, a new game mode has just dropped Siege. And this is the first game mode that's coming out while we've been in this new player series. So I want to go over it. There's a, a video going on. I kind of want to get the be a bit more familiar with this game mode and maybe get excited. I heard one criticism. It looks like it's more of the rewards, but let's go take a look at it for ourselves and people if you haven't done so already in this sponsored series that we've been doing for raid shadow legends this new player account if you haven't played yet scan that qr code use the link down below get involved with raid shadow legends and myself if you go if you haven't done so already we have made a clan not too long ago feel free to join if you haven't already it's called the real gary legion we currently have it's actually full 30 members i'm actually surprised but if you haven't found the legion or a guild feel free to try to check it out and see if we have it but man the slots filled up really quickly for everyone here really excited to have you guys on board we have a mixture of players some new players the mid-game players the veteran players so it's been a nice mix of stuff that we had and now the question is going to be with our clan that we have put together what is this new siege mode gonna be looking like now right now we're currently sitting at 268 clan activity and i believe as we're, we're gonna go through the requirements right now i don't know if we're gonna be able to do this event right away but i'm hoping we're gonna be able to do it soon because it kind of looks cool it's kind of like a big you ever play the risk board game kind of seeing gives gives me a little bit of that vibe uh almost but let's go ahead if you go hop on over to your little tab right there and you go hop over to news first thing that'll pop up is this new update new clan whoa jeez this new update version 9.0 which is introducing siege on thursday july 11th we're launching the first siege it's a new game mode where clans defend their own clan fortress while simultaneously attacking one owned by another clan the clan that destroys their enemy stronghold and earns the most victory medals will be declared the winner and there are going to be four stages there's a prep matchmaking battle and results calculation now this one this kind of blew me away now i'm assuming it's supposed to be like you know a version of territory wars you know alliance wars if you play other games similar to this nature the, the, prep, the prep phase is about 12 days which seems kind of long but the first one starting on july 11th which is you know today tomorrow i don't know how time works during this phase the main focus of your clan is to upgrade any buildings in your clan fortress set defense teams in them and then set the particular bonuses and conditions that will apply across the clan fortress now as you see there are different types of buildings that we're going to be going through in a moment here all clans will start their first siege with their clan forts in the same condition so uh, but here are the requirements which i'm not sure we're gonna be able to play right away we have to have 15 members at least at level 45 we must have at least 50 clan activity stars which we've been very active during the seven days before the start of your matchmaking phase your clan must have at least uh 15 defense teams in the clan fortress during the prep phase so let's see 15 members at level 45 as i said we kind of got a mixture of uh people from early game mid game so let me see if we're gonna be able to play this real quick so i'm not there yet but we have one two three four five six mm, uh, yeah we're gonna probably not be ready for this so we're gonna have to kind of appreciate it from a distance it seems like so basically half your clan has to be at least level 45 as the thing said not too long ago so i'm gonna have to watch from a distance but hopefully you know as a, we're a new clan i'm hoping we're gonna be able to build up there a little bit sooner but yeah 15 members so let's go ahead i'm gonna pull up this video for raid shadow legend i kind of want to just watch it with you guys because i have not really experienced it myself so i want to see the video to kind of get a, a little bit of a better idea so let's go ahead put in full screen mode sit back relax guys grab yourself a cup of java juice or elven juice i don't know whatever you want to call it around the raid shadow legends part of town and let's go check out this video here hello everyone welcome to the second part of our siege update this pre guy seems very chipper he seems excited for siege last time we looked at siege's core mechanics and toured the clan fortress's many buildings for this video we'll drill down on the various phases of a siege and see how clan versus clan combat and, and, and other game modes basically there's there's like three phases you have your you have your prep phase you have your uh then you have your basically your you know, defense setting phase and then you have the attack phase so but it was only like over a course of you know like two three days but man 12 days for prep seems kind of long i wonder if they're going to clarify that actually that. plays out so cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war for battle awaits each siege is divided into three I like the map the map seems really cool it gives me like feelings of like you're invading king's landing and game of thrones or 
something of that nature but look at all these different towers and you can see the various levels magic tower four five three two yeah and then you have these down here you have different posts down here so the, the map layout seems pretty cool so let's keep moving on phases prep matchmaking and battle the prep phase lasts 12 days 12 after days. the previous siege, that seems long, right? giving your clan ample opportunity to repair and upgrade your buildings, determine who is defending each building. And that That's kind of cool. Everyone's kind of in charge of a different building here. It seems like a lot of coordination is going to be needed for something like this. Activate the bonuses and conditions you want to use in the upcoming battle. You'll also be able to pick up any uncollected rewards and review battle reports to see how your clan fared in the last I'm guessing siege. this is your defense, but During yeah, the defensive prep placement, phase, okay. you cannot scout out any other clan fortresses or declare any attacks. So I guess the reason why they're taking 12 days is they want you to spend time activating these different bonuses, upgrading them. It kind of reminds me of uh, Alliance War, where there, you would, um, there would be different bonuses that you would have to upgrade to get the maximum effect, so some teams will work better than others. So I'm guessing this is kind of what they're doing here. Once the prep phase ends, the matchmaking phase begins. This will match right. your clan against an opposing clan of a similar strength, assuming you meet all the necessary conditions to begin a siege. For everyone's first siege, clans will be matched based on various factors like their CVC performance and clan league well, position. So far, we have none After of that. that <laughs> My clan is not the We haven't done any of this yet. <laughs> If your clan hasn't set at least 15 defense teams 15 within defensive your clan's teams, fortress okay. during the prep phase, you won't be put into the matchmaking pool. All right, pool. so you need 15 on defense, and you also need 15 people at level 45. I'm assuming this they're going to talk about that. This inactive clans don't interfere with matchmaking. Makes sense, makes and sense. newer clans aren't being thrown. And the map is really cool. I don't know if this is what it's going to... I'm assuming this what it's going to look like in-game, but still, I kinda, it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. match without being properly prepared. Finally, All right, the finally, the battle's begins. starting up. Your opponent's fortress will be revealed, and you have two days to conquer it. So, uh, 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 which, so uh, I'm, I'm, the only thing I'm confused about is this like uh, one team side, and this is the other team side. I'm These not 100 sure. cannot be repaired sure. during the battle phase, so ensure all your repairs are completed before battle is joined. So, okay. How does the siege well, cool actually play out? To complete almost any action in a siege, you need scrolls, not mastery scrolls. But defense, attack, and rematch scrolls to place champions okay. as defenders within a build. So it's kind of like, uh, just like attack attack tokens, right? I think in Alliance War, for example, you have to basically recoup, you know, energy in order to attack. I'm guessing that's kind of what they're going for here. Building, you'll need defense scrolls. Each clan I gets see. enough defense scrolls for 30 clan members uh -huh. to fill all the open slots in their fortress. Clans with less than 30 members will be at a disadvantage. So step up recruitment before Siege goes live. With your defense scrolls in hand, spend them wherever you want. It costs one scroll to assign one defense team to a building or post. Mm, Unless you have duplicates, okay. you cannot assign the same champion to multiple So the more scrolls teams. you have, the more However, defense you can lay down? champions on guard duty are still free to lay Siege to an opponent's fortress. Don't ask about the logistics. For posts, it's simple. There's only one space for one team. So pick your champions and condition that best suits your strategy. Buildings are a little more complex. Depending on how many slots there are available, buildings may be divided into individual groups that become super important when attacking and defending. For example, a level three stronghold is composed of six groups, with each group containing three defense teams. An attacker will have to defeat the first team in each group to continue their onslaught. So lay out I like how they have the cheater. <laughs> your weakest defenders first to bait your enemy into a trap. As a reminder, only the clan leader and deputies can activate building bonuses. And the only player who plays champions into a defense team slot can remove them. So don't be that guy. Talk with the rest of your clan to figure out a strategy yeah, you, rather than rushing. Yeah. One thing I'm not, I'm not, I'm still getting used to the, the clan situation, but it seems like the clan chat isn't robust enough for this. So I think this is one of those things you definitely want to move to like an, a, a, an external social platform, like maybe Discord for better coordination. This is a lot of coordination over, uh, yeah, 12 days perhaps, and then the actual attack. You can reassign champions, bonuses, and conditions with no penalty during the prep phase. Your team's setup will be remembered between sieges, and you won't have to manually pick your champions each time. You'll also have access to the usual preset menu. Okay, you can yeah, choose so you can just, teams yeah, from the arena time. or swap back to the team used in the previous siege. You can also set a reserve team in case of emergency. Should any slots be left empty at the end of the prep mm, phase, okay, the game will try to fill them from Fills randomly them chosen teams okay. from the clan's pool of reserves. Let's now switch from defense to attack. Attacking enemy teams requires attack scrolls, which are granted to each clan member at the beginning of the battle phase. 
Their number can differ between sieges and is determined by how many eligible participants there are in your clan and the max number of defense teams the enemy fortress can hold. You'll also get one additional attack scroll just for good measure. Now, before you ask, no, you cannot airdrop right into the enemy stronghold and call it mission accomplished. You'll need to fight your way through the enemy's fortress, taking out posts and buildings to clear a path for the remainder of your clan. Battles between teams are strictly 1v1, so once someone is declared an attack, no one else can intervene until the battle is finished. Should the attacker fail to defeat the defending team, another clan member can try their luck, or the initial attacker can spend a rematch scroll for another shot. You're not locked into using the same team when rematching, so change up your tactics accordingly. As mentioned, larger buildings like a stronghold will require defeating each team within multiple defense groups. Players can attack the first team within each separate group simultaneously, but they can only move on to the next team in a group after triumphing over the one before it. Should you come across hmm. an empty slot, you can capture it without a fight, though this does mean spending an attack scroll. To claim a building from the enemy, you must defeat or capture every slot within it. When you do, the building is considered destroyed, disabling any bonuses that building may provide to the enemy. Rinse and repeat until the siege is won. However, should one enemy team remain standing in a building, it counts as a successful defense, yeah, okay. meaning the building receives no overall damage and the defending clan receives victory medals. Sometimes holding on to the this is nice, yeah. Getting the, this, I feel like this isn't always appreciated in other clan based, guild based games where the defense doesn't feel like it's meaningful enough. Yeah, if you stop someone, cool, but there should be more of a benefit if you're holding down the line. Uh, that's one thing I've noticed that you know, if someone drops 50 teams on the one, it's basically it counts the same as someone getting two defensive holds. Like, you, you would think the more holds you get, the more rewards you should get. So, I'm curious how they're gonna do this. Bitter end is victory enough once defeated. Defending teams cannot be fought again, except for in Mana Shrines. Here, mana shrines. each player in the attacking clan can rematch defeated teams exactly once. These rebattles do not cost an attack scroll and yield mana orbs hmm. for successful victories. Conquer a shrine and then earn as many mana orbs as you can to fuel future sieges. Um, as for your champions, so it's, it's, they can participate okay. in a total of two offensive battles per siege. So, so your... after, after doing all the other battles, you can come here. It's kind of like, I don't know, a, a purgatory of the, the, the characters or teams you've defeated, and you can just, like, farm materials off them. Attacks carefully. Don't waste your most powerful attacker demolishing a defender that someone weaker could handle. Each building that you successfully capture or defend will earn your clan victory medals. You'll need to earn as many as possible to be declared the winner of a siege and to unlock some sweet milestone rewards in the process. Important note. Attacking or defending a higher level building does not yield more victory medals than a lower level mm, one. Okay. So Let's capturing that empty low level defense so you tower don't ignore that. Be a better use of resources yeah. than besieging that heavily defended shrine. Yeah. Okay. The siege is over. The fighting has been truly fierce. But after the dust settles, who is declared the victor? To stand triumphant over your rival, you need to fulfill two conditions. So capture their stronghold, more stronghold and earn more okay. victory medals than okay. that. If you achieve both, Congratulations, you're the winner. If you're unable to complete one or both of these objectives, it's mission failed. Mm. You will also earn or lose victory points based on- If both strongholds remain standing- Wow, okay, that seems kind of- <laughs> Boy, that seems kind of rough. You'd think someone should be declared a winner, won right? And lost during the battle phase. And if your clan was declared the overall winner or loser. Victory points inform your clan's siege tier and will be important for future matchmaking and determine certain rewards. We all love rewards. Yeah, so this is going to be so, the biggest thing. This seems like a lot of effort, you know? It, it seems cool. You know, we got all these different strongholds. There's a bit of a strategy involved. It seems to be a, maybe a little bit more involved than some of the other guild-based game modes I've seen for similar type of games here. But the question is the rewards. Let's have a look at what you could win from Sieges. First up are Florin and Mana Orb rewards. Each player will earn Florins whenever they win an offensive battle, with them also receiving more for each of their defense teams that remain undefeated at the end of the battle phase. The whole clan will receive mana orbs for capturing the enemy stronghold and shrines, as well as keeping their own secure. As previously mentioned, rebattling defeated enemy teams and shrines can also net additional mana orbs. Mm -hmm. These rewards are yours to claim once a siege ends, but only if you won at least one offensive or defensive battle. Hey, 
No guts, no glory. Milestone rewards are next on the docket. And these can be collected as soon as your clan hits a specific victory right, medal milestone. So what do we got inside? Like with Florin and Mana Orb rewards, you need to have won one offensive or defensive battle to claim these clan-wide rewards. Finally, there's the biggest reward. All right, the Siege, siege Victory, victory chest. chest. All right, so what do we have? Are those artifacts, okay. Three of those primal shards, hmm. I see, I'm still kind of getting acclimated to the game, of course, but this doesn't seem like, you know, um, like I was expecting maybe a lot more than this, but I'm not sure if these rewards are final or maybe these, maybe these are great, but yeah, at, at the, at the initial, at the initial impression, especially though, the one shard that's right there, I was expecting maybe a little bit more. This might not be final. I'm not hundred percent sure. Only the victorious clan receives these wondrous spoils containing all manner of amazing prizes. Same rules apply though. No battle victory, no chest reward Man. for you. Bragging rights. I don't know home. how I feel about that. You know, you, you, after imagine 12, 13, 14 days, however long this takes and like you don't even get the big reward. I don't know. So yeah, I don't, I got, I got, to, I got to see this kind of executed, but of course I'm not gonna be able to run this with my clan anytime reward, soon. Right? <laughs> well, each siege win earns your clan a siege trophy, okay. which will be displayed next to your CVC trophies. Okay, so it's you, do you always get nice to expand the old trophy. It's just uh, bragging There rights? are also dedicated siege leaderboards where you can see which clan members okay. donated the most Florence or mana orbs, as well as who racked up the most battle victories. For you clan leaders and deputies, inspect these results carefully. You can see who are your star players and who can be trusted to lead the charge in future sieges. With that, the siege is over, my brave warriors. The prep phase kicks back in, giving your clan 12 days to rest, collect rewards, hmm. wow, okay. and wow. prepare that, that's for the a, That's next a long battle. schedule. 12 days and on, 12 days off. That concludes our update preview, too. Man, <laughs> that sure was extensive. We hope this guide has prepared you for your future siege battles. Well, yeah, I'm curious to see what this is going to look like in the, the grand scheme of things here. Uh, first one's going to be up and running soon, so we're really going to be able to see it for what it is here. So with this new siege mode, it's getting me thinking, how can I start preparing to get myself ready to be involved in this new game mode? Yeah, I'm not quite at the level yet, but we're almost there, and I think there's stuff I can do in the meantime getting there. Basically, what I'm seeing in terms of how I can make myself better is, number one, I need to get more champions. Good champion to level them up get them some more artifacts because with this game mode you're gonna need a lot of teams on defense a lot of teams on offense and of course teams that are gonna be fleshed out so right now of course i'm loving the champions that i do have but you know what? i want to i want to start up in the ante i want to start getting more involved in raid shadow legends and getting me closer to being siege ready so obviously one thing i'm noticing I, artifacts are incredibly important and uh, one thing i'm coming across as well <laughs> i'm always coming short on silver always upgrading artifacts for these characters that i'm getting early on of course being able to upgrade these abilities are going to be important too so also getting tombs will be nice to try to upgrade some of these abilities and again it's not even just for seed it's going to be helpful for other game modes out there the pve the pvp aspects that we already have in there so what i'm thinking of doing is let's up gay ante let's go ahead loosen some purse strings give them those three wacky numbers and talk about a couple of things here now i've done some research on some of the best deals that you can get in this game uh view the resources that i've been using for example Example has been a Yumi's Loves website here. They have tons of breakdowns on all the various packs, what they're charging in game, what the actual cost is. For example, like we have the Sacred Shard pack. The offer cost is $49.99, but their analysis is $39.52. And I've also been using, for example, the Hell Hades calculator to try to get a calculation on what the good deals are. If you are going to spend money, of course, you want to kind of make informed decisions on what the best way of doing that is. So there are three things that are currently in the store that I want to pick up myself. The first First, what I'm thinking is picking up this monthly pack right here, $49.99, but it comes with two sacred shards. We're going to talk about the shards in a moment because there's going to be a double dropper 2x event coming up here soon. And it's also got 1500 energy and 1,005, 1,150 gems. So what I did is I pulled up this Hell Hades calculator, threw in what was there, what the in game price is. So it's $49.99. We put in 1500 energy, the eight ancients, four void, two sacreds. And of course, we also threw in the, uh, oh, shoot. 
<laughs> a little too much right there. 1,005, right, right? Did I get it right this time? Hold on. Did I do it wrong? No, no. We, no there we go. Put it back in. 1,000. Yeah, 1,150 gems. Let me double check, right? Yeah, 1,000. I thought I put 11,000. Like, wow, that would have been a really good deal. And then when you go ahead and you do the calculation, Hell Hades Gaming's estimation is about a $66 value, which is a legendary deal. So let's go ahead and pick up this one. The energy alone. I'm always doing the multi battles. I feel like I, <laughs> I need more energy. I need more multi battles to get me burning through. It's going to help me level up, get me more materials I need to ascend my champions to level them up. So let's go ahead. Whaler fail on the wall. Who's the wheeliest of them all? All right. So that's one that I picked up right there. Next thing that we have here is this mini mix pack for $25. And first off, has a lot of XP brews trying to level up my champions more. Even try to maybe level up the food that I need to maybe level up some other champions. A couple of rank four chickens, the XP boost as well. You're going to get five of them, a bunch of demon lord kings, uh, keys, and lots of energy here. A couple of energy refills, some arena token stuff, which is going to be good for the tournaments and whatnot. And 2.5 million silver. As I said, I'm burning through this stuff super quickly. The prism crystals, I'm not 100% sure what their valuation, but I kind of want to actually open one with you guys. I'm kind of curious. There's a little summon pull event, so I kind of want to try that out for the first time with y'all. So let's go ahead and pick up this one. All right, and one more thing. Uh, this, <laughs> right now, we're going all whale mode, but one of the best deals overall that I usually would recommend, even in other games, are these daily gem packs. If you do want to spend a little bit of money, being able to do something like this, which breaks it up over a course of a month, is one of the better ways of spending your money. $10, 2,140 crystals broken up over an entire month. As you can see through Hell Hades website, 2,140 gems. I took everything else out of there. It's a legendary deal. It's about, a, it's about triple the value. If you go to Ayumi's Loves website, they give it even more of a value where they're saying that the it's an actual cost of $50. And it, this is what the recommendation is. If you decide to play this game for more than three months, I would highly suggest getting these gem packs. This accelerates your progress and getting your gem mine to the max level, unlocking the market slots to purchase more great deals. Duds, it's such the mystery shard stockpile, which for the summon rush events we're, we're going to talk about here in a moment. And finally, unlocking all the slots in the sparring pit to train your high level champions while you're away from the game. So right here, I know we're going full wheel mode today. We're loosening up those purse strings. We're giving those three wacky numbers. But if you plan on spending a little bit and you're enjoying raid, this is one of the better deals overall that I'm seeing consistent opinions from many, many people. So let's pick it up. And all right, we picked it up. And as you can see, we have our first day that we can claim right there. And there you go. If you hop over to my inbox, you'll see all of the goodies. Yeah, we got enough to keep us busy for a while. So I'm definitely gonna be taking advantage of my daily XP. We have all these shards. We're gonna be doing a shard opening soon here because they're doing a 2X legendary drop event here very shortly. The multi battles. Yeah, I, uh, as you can see, if you can go to the tournament section here, there is an event that's gonna be going on here. There's a champion chase tournament. Get champions by any means necessary and take first place to win the Legget, which is the new champion we just talked about the other day. It's not live. It's gonna be starting here in a couple hours. And if you go ahead and check out the news section, the reason why I wanted to pick up some of those shards is because we have a double chance of receiving a legendary champion from the sacred shards and this is the time when they do the double the the 2x sacred shard openings that is the time to open up those sacred shards so as you see we are going to be ready to be opening the, all eight of these up and i don't know maybe a little bit more if i, I feel like i want to get carried away and speaking of the shards i want to go check out this there's a supporter summon pool going on here we already picked up 15 of them i have never opened these up before but i don't know while we're here why don't we just pick up one at least so we already have 15 from that one offer we got i don't know let's go spend four five five more dollars why the heck now we've already went this far getting ready for the siege all right so we're ready to rock and roll we picked it up now's the time to see if we can get something good during this event you can summon one of the following champions so the way i understand this it's a much more limited pool of stuff that you can pull from during a summon pull event you can summon from a unique pool of champions each event will have its own unique pool of champions that can be summoned champions of the same rarity have an equal chance of being summoned so 94 percent chance of getting an epic six percent chance of getting a legendary prism chris are required to summon champions from the prism shard so let's do it baby let's go ahead and clap it up whaler fail on the wall who's the whaliest of them all. Let's see. Come on, give me something big, give me something big, baby. And what do we got? 
We got a shorty up in here. We have Cornelia. Let's see. What are the reviews are showing here? All right. We got a lot of green. Let's go. Let's go. Listen, at the end of the day, I love the in-game reviews, but I want to go ahead and see what our go-to resources are telling us. So they're putting Cornelia in the B rank category here. And again, anything being above for me, again, I need as many champions as possible. So this is going to be very helpful, I feel like. In short, Cornelia's role is best suited as a crowd controller rather than dealing damage to bosses, which is great for arena factors and Dune Tower content with the AI preset implemented. You can disable certain skills such as revitalizing rest as it, as it does not synergize well with the block debuff champions in that team. So, all right. So again, I need to get as many champs as possible to get ready for this siege. So we got a lot of preparation to do before we get ourselves into that game mode. Then again, if you need someone to be dominating with, first off, scan that QR code, Tayrell and uh, Rector, uh, Rector Draft, whatever her name is. Very great characters that you're going to get out here. This as well as uh, Tayrell, great characters, great champions. To start your forward momentum and raid shadow legends and feel free to try to join my clan if there's some inactive people i'll, I'll free up some space so we can get some new people in there but again thanks for everyone for watching this video being a part of the series let me know your thoughts down below would love to get your opinion on what raid shadow legends is new siege mode is all about for you guys but until then leave that like comment down below subscribe so you're not missing a thing and always remember it's great to be in the empire today oh.